Let's have a look at how the toolbars work in Microsoft Word. You may have noticed that in the video lessons we've done so far, I haven't talked about the parts of a Word window. And that is because you should have covered that in earlier learning when you were learning about how to use the computer. But very, very briefly, we've got the title bar running across the top with the name of the document. We've got the menu bar, which has got file, edit, view menus on them. We've got toolbars. Some people call these icon bars. They've got the little pictures on. Icons. Icons represent an activity. Shortcuts, if you will, to the main menu items. So we've got the print icon there on the toolbar. Or we can also get the long way round using the file menu to go to print there. So the toolbars are usually shortcuts. We've got scroll bars. Vertical scroll bars, horizontal scroll bars, and the status bar at the bottom, which tells you information about the document that you are currently working on. You should know those names of the parts of the windows from earlier learning. I'm going to look at now how to actually manipulate the toolbars. If we click on the View menu and drop down to Toolbars, we'll see there are a whole range of toolbars available for you to use. The ones with the orange square and a tick next to them suggest that that toolbar is already on the screen and available to you. So if you notice, we've got the standard toolbar and the formatting toolbar already available. I'll show you where those are. I'm just going to click away from the menu so the menu disappears. And we can see here is the standard toolbar. And on the standard toolbar, you can open, save, print, etc. And on the formatting toolbar, this is where you can change the formatting of the te text, different font styles and sizes. And we'll work out how to use those as we go through the various lessons. These toolbars can be switched on and off. Let's have a look back at the view menu and drop down to toolbars. To switch a toolbar on and off, we simply click its name. So if we don't want the formatting toolbar anymore, we simply click on formatting and the formatting toolbar disappears. Gives you more space on the screen to work with. But it's not gone forever. We can get it back simply by reversing the process. So we click view, drop down to toolbars, move across and click on formatting. Notice the orange tick has gone now. But when we click it again, the toolbar reappears. Just have a look at one or two of the other toolbars. So click view, down to toolbars. The drawing toolbar is one that is often used. And normally that anchors itself to the bottom of the screen. It's where you can draw shapes and pictures. And again, we will use this in later videos. We're just looking at switching them on and off at the moment. The other thing about toolbars is they're not fixed. This formatting toolbar is currently at the top of the screen, but we can move it around. Might be hard for you to see, but at the left hand side, there's a vertical column of four dots. When I point to those four dots, my mouse cursor changes to a four way arrow. Once I've got that four way arrow, I can click and drag the toolbar and it undocks from the screen. It's now floating. Well, I've let go of the mouse now and I can use the title bar area to move that around. I can position that anywhere on the screen. If I drag it to the bottom, as it gets towards the bottom of the screen, it jumps in and locks into place at the bottom of the screen. It's not permanent. I can click and drag the, the vertical dots to move it around again. Pop it back at the top. Let's have a look at some more toolbars. View, toolbars. Some of these we'll use and some we won't. There's an interesting one there that is word count. There's the word count toolbar floating in the middle of the screen. 
Sometimes the default is to float. Sometimes the default is to anchor. I can move that around. It's counted how many words we've got. And I can click on recount. And it will tell me how many words we've got when we've made some changes. 77 words now. But I'm not showing you how to use that. That's just to show you the toolbars are there. And I can anchor that perhaps at the left of the screen by moving it to the left. And it's now positioned at the left of the screen. Using the four dots, I can click and drag it. And I can close down the toolbar by clicking the close button. I prefer not to use that system for reasons that will become apparent when we're working with pictures. I prefer to switch it on and off using the view menu, drop down to toolbars and remove the tick. A little bit of a, an added bonus, you'll often find that your menu, your, sorry, your toolbars are all on one line. So I've clicked and dragged the formatting uh, toolbar upward. So it's on the same line as the standard toolbar. It joins them onto one line and squashes things down so that you can't actually see everything that you need to see. If that's the case, you can do a number of things. One is to use the icon toolbar options right at the end of the toolbar. And by clicking on there, it shows you all the rest of the available buttons that were on the toolbar. And you can use them from there just by clicking on them. Or you can use the vertical dots again to click and drag and move the toolbars around. I don't like to see my formatting and um, standard toolbars on the same line. So you can force Word to make that not happen. Force it to be on two lines. And we can get to that by doing View, drop down to Toolbars. And you can't quite see this, but right at the bottom it says Customize. And it brings up the Customizer Toolbars window. This isn't strictly in the syllabus. I'm giving you a little bit of a bonus here. On the options tab, we can do two things. Well, more than two things, but two that I want to point out. One is to show the standard formatting toolbars on two rows. That means those toolbars will always be on two rows. The default is not. I like it, so they are makes things a lot easier to see. And you might have noticed when you click on menus in Word or any other Microsoft program, you don't necessarily get all the options available at first glance. You've got to use the little chevrons at the bottom to expand the menu. That's this feature, always show full menus. If we've got that ticked as I have, then you can always see the full menu. If I remove the tick, however, and close that down. Now when I click on a menu now, I don't get the full menu. I've got to come down to this icon at the bottom to expand the full menu. See that again, click on edit. I haven't got the full menu. I can wait a while and it will eventually appear. Or I can come down to this expand icon and get the rest of the menu. For learners that can be quite tricky. So I prefer to use view toolbars and customize and put a tick in always show full menus makes life a little bit easier so now my menus always appear that's working with toolbars by switching them on and off that's really the only thing that's in this syllabus switching them on and off by clicking to switch the feature on and off but we also looked at moving them around and customizing so they're always on two rows. Finally, as an alternative to doing view and toolbars, you can actually right click and bring up the same menu. That's right clicking on the toolbar or the menu bar and it brings up the same menu.